Welcome back, everybody, to the Dark Forest. Once again, it is I, here to bring you some serious spooks for your spooktacular evening. Make sure you guys check out my merchandise. The information is in the description box down below. I have a lot of different various designs that are really spooktacular. Anyways, without further ado, let's get spooky. My name is Poncho, and I'm from northeastern Arizona, near Flagstaff, to give you a better location point. I am of Navajo descent, and I'm 22 years old. We were just enjoying a night drinking around my buddy's fire pit by his trailer. It's something that we do all the time. There's not terribly too much going on out here. We were just joking about some movie that we had seen the night before drinking some brews. We had just got done eating some grub and we were all just snacking on some jerky. Later on that evening, we ran out of beer. Go figure. So I made my way inside the RV to grab another six pack. My buddy Hoya was saying something outside, but I didn't hear what he said when I was walking up the stairway. I swear, I must have been in that RV for literally maybe two minutes, at the very most. And that was only because I was texting my chick on my cell phone while I was walking over to the refrigerator. When my friend Hoya and his buddy came rushing into the RV, scrambling, almost tripping on each other, screaming and closing the door and locking it from behind them. It scared the crap out of me, honestly. I wasn't really paying attention when they were running inside. They were completely and utterly freaked out, and both of them were out of breath. Yo, guys... You guys scared the crap out of me. What are you guys doing? What's going on? I asked. After what seemed like minutes, but really it was just seconds, Hoya had confessed what they both had seen outside when I was inside the RV. When you went inside, you know, we were still by the fire pit just talking. We saw this guy started walking over to us, out of nowhere. He just appeared in the desert. That's when he... He changed into something. His eyes. It was a skinwalker. Yeah, right. Yeah, my grandparents told me about that too, dude. You guys just pulling a prank on me? I asked. I just stood there and waited. Waited for at least one of them to crack a smile and point at me and say, Gotcha, sucker! But that never happened. They truly were completely terrified. This was no joke. Suddenly, my heart started beating in my chest hard after the realization had kicked in. Is it still outside? I whispered. Hoya just sat on the couch, hunched over, staring at the palms of his hands, shaking his head without any verbal response. His friend just had this dead stare that scared the crap out of me. He was completely motionless, shocked, almost like a coma with his eyes open. Even though I was utterly terrified, I couldn't help but be curious. I walked over to the RV window and pushed the blind open from the left corner very slightly and peered outside by the fire pit. I want to say about 15 yards out from the fire pit is when I saw the eyes. The glowing amberish green colored eyes just peering out in the darkness staring directly. God, it felt like it was directly staring at me. Like it knew I was looking at it. But how could it know that? Whatever it was, was not human. As soon as I saw those eyes and that dark silhouette, I closed the blinds and sat down next to my friend. I was completely and utterly freaked out. It's true. They do exist.
I was camping with my family last spring out in Knoxville, Tennessee near the Smoky Mountains. It was absolutely stunning and gorgeous out there. As we are not originally from Tennessee, we had just moved out there last year. It was supposed to be just a two-day getaway. When we first arrived, we unpacked our things, set up camp, and started getting the food on the grill. We had one of those $5 Bluetooth wireless speakers that you could play music on, and we were just listening to music as we cooked. It was pretty humid, which is something that we're still not used to, but it's not as bad as Florida. I went to high school down in Palm Beach Gardens, and let me tell you, you could feel it. The wetness in the air. It's quite disgusting. Let's just say that I moved and joined the military straight out of high school just to get the hell out of that state. True story. We wrapped up some hamburgers and hot dogs along with some chips with some soda and waters. The evening was starting to kick in as the sun was just starting to set over the horizon. The beautiful mountains in the distance were just breathtaking. It was just green everywhere you looked. It was gorgeous. So, I broke out the s'mores, got the fire cooking pretty good, and we started telling some ghost stories around the fire pit. By this time, it was pitch black outside. The only lights you could see were in the stars in the sky. It was a partly cloudy night and began to get quite chilly that evening. I was annoyed because I kept getting all the damn melted marshmallows all over my fingers and it was sticky as hell. And there was no bathroom for me to go off and wash it off so I had to waste good mountain water that I had packed up in the ice chest just to rinse off my hands. Because the public fountain and toilets were a little ways away and I just I was just too lazy to walk down there to be honest. After a few ghost stories and a couple of beers later, I decided to call it a night and we all went to sleep in our tent. Everybody else seemed to have fallen asleep a hell of a lot faster than me. I'm always the last one to go to sleep. I toss and turn and I could never get comfortable. Even at home, it's not just a camping thing. Even when I'm at the house, it takes me literally 45 minutes before I think I actually fall asleep. I try not to think too hard or think of too many different things while I'm laying down, but even when I try to clear my mind, it's like impossible for me to go to sleep. I don't understand. I must have dozed off for a few hours, because when I woke up, I was completely and utterly tired still, but I had the urge to pee. I looked at my watch and it was about 1am, give or take. My wife and daughter were still fast asleep and I didn't want to wake them up. I didn't need any help walking to the restroom. It was a little ways away though. But I figured, it's fine as long as I have my flashlight. So, I put on my chanclas, grabbed my flashlight, and slowly unzipped the tent door as quietly as possible, not trying to wake up my family. I slowly stepped outside while I was trying to put on my sweat jacket at the same time. That's right, it's Captain Multitasker in the flesh, baby. It was cold as hell outside. My nips were rock hard, they could have scratched glass. Whoa, I didn't think it got cold like this out here. I was really surprised. So, I zipped down the zipper to the tent so that no creatures or little critters could go inside while I was gone. I clicked on my flashlight and started walking down the dirt path towards the public pit bathroom. As I was walking, I suddenly had the urge that I was being watched. I don't know why I suddenly had this fear in the back of my mind, but it gave shivers down my spine. I started to walk a little faster. Yes, I think I was psyching myself out, and I started telling myself to relax. You're a grown man. There's nothing to worry about. You got your flashlight, and you're just going to go use the restroom. That's it. 
so fast forward a few minutes. I reach the pit of destiny, handle my business, and I'm walking back towards our camping location where our tent is. I'm about 20 yards away. I can see the tent clear in the distance in front of me. That's when I heard the howl. I stop and froze in my tracks. Whoa. Now, Tennessee doesn't have wolves. They have coyotes, but that's it. Coyotes run in packs, so I would have heard more than one howl if it was coyotes, and plus, I know what they sound like. They're loaded in California. This was completely different. Whatever this is was alone. And it's... And it sounded... off. I started flashing my flashlight in all directions trying to see if this thing was close to me or was it far off in the distance. I couldn't really tell because the house sounded so loud it seemed like it was right next to me somewhere, but it echoed all around me. I had no idea where this thing was. And that frightened me even more. I turned around and started moving my flashlight from left to right. And for a split second, my flashlight gazed upon this black furry silhouette of this beast-looking dog. Its eyes glowed red like some hellhound. It was hunched over, but it was clearly more than four feet high. As soon as my flashlight beamed on it, it disappeared into the brush. I almost fell behind out of fright. It was the scariest thing I have ever seen in my life. It felt like I was in some horror movie. I was shaking all over. I turned around and hightailed it as quickly back to my tent as possible. I got back in the tent, woke everybody up, tried to explain what the hell I saw out there. They were still half asleep, not wanting to believe or accept anything I was saying, but they could tell I was deadly scared and telling the truth. My wife and I grabbed as much as we could. I grabbed my car keys, my wallet, and some essentials that were still inside the backpack on the inside of the tent, and we got inside my truck and drove off. We never went back for the rest of our things. I live in Mexico about a two hours drive south of the Arizona-New Mexico border. I was visiting my grandparents from a neighboring town. I stay the weekend with them, help out around the house, and do some minor chores as they are kind of elderly. I never knew my father. He took off when I was very young, so it's just been me and my siblings and my mom. And of course my grandparents too, but like I said, they live in a different town over. I'm a 19-year-old female. I was in the backyard hang-drying some clothing on some wire. It was a windy day, and the sun was beaming hard in the sky. It was quite hot that afternoon, and I felt like I was going to die. It was just hotter than usual. But my grandparents don't have air conditioning, nor does my mom, so I'm kind of used to it. I just complain anyways. So my grandparents live in the desert, basically. I mean, there are some various trees in the distance, but it's primarily just dirt and fields out there. It wouldn't be smart to wander off out here if you don't know where you're going. Let's just say that much. In the distance, I was just gazing and just my eyes were wandering. I was just pinning things up on the wire, as I said. And I saw this coyote-looking wolf. I couldn't tell. It was pretty far out. It was running towards the hill that was out farther out. At that point, it would disappear from my view. The weird thing about it, though, was this coyote was completely black. The Mexican wolves, they're typically not. They're more of a dark brownish tan color, and this one was at least three times the size of the ones that are local to this area. 
the scariest thing about this thing was right before it crossed over the hill. It turned back at me, I swear you not. And it hopped up on its back legs and ran over the hill on its back two legs. Like a human. I've never seen a wolf, coyote, any canine for that matter, ever do something like that before. It's completely unheard of, and to be realistic, I don't think it's scientifically possible. I talked to my grandmother about it. She's a very superstitious woman. Let's just say that. She said to beware. Stay clear of the dog man. I live in southwestern Colorado in a town called Cortez. It's just north of the New Mexico border. My name is Juan, and I'm 25, but this happened when I was a teenager, 13 to be exact. I was camping with my family at the Cortez Mesa Verde KOA journey. It's right next to Denny Lake. It's the best place to camp out here, at least in our opinion. It's pretty mountainy out here, yet it's still pretty much desert. But I grew up here, so it doesn't really bother me. I just remembered the first night was pretty normal. It was just a typical camping night with the family. Just stories, jokes, food, and just relaxing around the fire pit in the evening. I was riding my mountain bike with my cousin. We wanted to go on an adventure, just the two of us. So we actually left the campgrounds and started heading further south. It was probably an hour or so, maybe more. I don't remember, I know we were on some trails and then we actually ventured off into no man's land for quite a while, but we were having a blast doing so. I know we ended up somewhere in the Mesa Verde National Park campgrounds where the mountains are in the woods. That's what I knew, we probably adventured too far off. We were approaching the mountainside. That's when we came across this man that was further up ahead. We knew we weren't allowed to talk to strangers, so we kept our distance and started pedaling a little slower on our bikes towards that direction. I don't know why we were still continuing to even ride in that person's direction, but we couldn't help it. We just kept riding towards him. As we got a little closer to the man, we noticed that he lifted his hand into the air and started waving at us. Maybe he's just a nice guy, I said to my cousin as we continued to ride closer. As we started to approach the man, he was either of native descent or he was Latino, I couldn't really tell. There was something really weird about the way he was dressed. He wasn't wearing no jeans and t-shirt like normal guys do. He was dressed very, very old-fashioned. My cousin and I stopped in our tracks because my spidey sense started going off in full alert for some reason. I grabbed my cousin's right handlebar on his hand and forced him to stop with me. I turned to my cousin and said, Wait, we should probably just head back. Why are we going over here? My cousin just shrugged and replied, I don't know, I was just following you and the guy was waving, so I just figured maybe he could give us directions to a trail or something. When we both looked back over towards the man, he had vanished. The man was gone, and I swear, when we stopped our bikes, he was literally probably about 10 yards in front of us. In his place, we saw this gray wolf staggering away into the brush. The wolf turned its head at us as it was galloping away. Its eyes. Its eyes. They, they were glowing. Well, kitties, 
I hope that you all enjoyed the four Skinwalker and Dogman sighting stories tonight. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends. And spread me like butter. Have a good night. And sweet dreams. <laughs>